Well, as you can see, we're here at the workbench where Dave actually makes his money. So Dave, why don't you get right to it? Tell us what we're talking about rigs and techniques. You know, we had waiting last week, but I thought it would be really cool for us to do the rigs and techniques, <laughs> not necessarily on a waiting show. Hey, so there you go. That makes it sense. It keeps the love of waiting continuing. <laughs> yeah, we messed it up, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we all just right. left anyway, all our waiting Texas, stuff at home. Texas is a great waiting state. You know, they've got hundreds of miles, and uh, it's just a great way to get out and get immersed into nature. You know, fishing in a boat's great, and you get to go to maybe some places you you know you can't get on your foot but when you wade into the water early in the morning when the sun's coming up or when the sun's going down it's just really nice to be there and, and uh, you feel like you're in the water and when you're doing that you get to learn a lot about the water as well you know you, your your education goes up quite a bit uh, just from the wading part but when you pull up to your spot the first thing you want to do is you want to get out of your car and before you put all your stuff in, on and jump in you want to take a look you know you want to look around a little bit see if you see some fish moving maybe the baits you know moving around some current would be nice uh the presence of birds is always yeah. a good thing and, and you said car but that applies for boat too correct yeah. you know you, yeah if you're going to be jumping out of the boat and, and wading it's the same yeah. same deal you want to pull up to your spot and and take a good gander at it and make sure everything's going because you know you might not want to st start at that spot you know if there's nothing going on and because once you get out there and start walking you're, you're committed then, you know, you're, you're going to have to walk a little way sometimes. So, you always, you know, check, ch check that out. And uh, you, you can also learn from just uh, feeling the bottom, you know, when you're walking along, you can feel the bottom, feel how the bottom changes. You start feeling, oh, I'm, I'm walking in sand now and you start getting bites and, or oh, there's broken, uh, broken sand shell. and grass or shell yeah. and I'm starting to get bites. And pretty soon that comes into your head. You know, after you keep doing that for a long time, you get to the point where, you know, you're walking and walking and you go, hey, this thing's, this seems like a good spot. You don't even know why. And you go, oh, because I'm standing in shell and sand right. and stuff where I was getting bites before. Right. It just comes right to you. And it's also a good place to start fly fishing. Correct. Because there's nothing around. You know, when you're out there in the water, there's nothing for you to snag on. You know, a lot of times when you're trying to do it in a creek or something or on a dock, there's a million things for you to get hung up on. The only thing that you can get hung up on when you're, you know, fly fishing and wading is your ears or, you know, something else. You know, I always get so hooked our, myself. So we've found our spot. Right. Now what are we going to use, Dave? Well, you know, I, I you're going to want to use either something uh, that has a long reach for you, you know, as far as your tackle long goes. Long rod? Yeah, you want to use a seven-foot rod at least because you want to make long casts. You really can't see what's around you you know deep into the water you can see things breaking and so you want to be you want to cover as much ground as possible and that means you walking and casting walking and casting so you know a 20 pound diamond braid with you know a, even a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader yeah. is just fine for for wade for trout and reds and and whatever's out there but you know i like to use anything on the end of my line that either imitates one of two things a small bait fish or a shrimp. Those are what most of the trout and the redfish are eating. You know, those are the, the two main imitators, you know, or prey that I'm trying to imitate. So all my stuff usually looks something like that. Actually, that, that vapor shad on there with that heavy weight. Right. You know, you have to put that weighted hook on there so you can throw that vapor shad a long way. Right. But it looks, the vapor shad there, looks like a shrimp or a bait. Right, which is why the, I like it. Yeah, because of the translucent look that it has. Right, it, it's either, it can be either they can think it's a bait fish or a shrimp, which to me is you know gold. All right, now talk about you know guys in Texas love throwing topwaters, Dave. Right. So what? Tell me about your favorite one. Maybe we start off with. Yep, that's an easy one, especially when you're chopo is great when you're searching. Uh, you know, because all you have to do is throw it out and reel it back to you. It's also great for people who don't really have a whole lot of rhythm and can't walk the dog. You know, that's when you, you go to one of your walking baits there. The jaywalker. The jaywalker. Yeah. And, you know, and if the fish aren't up on top, I like to use a Mirrodeen, uh, a mirror lure, uh, something that suspends these new ones here with the, the mullet, the mullet flavors with, you know, with the skin on them, the sea eyes. Those things are awesome. Any Mirrodeen with an olive green back or, or a print on it is going to get bit by something. That Mirrodeen is just, I don't know what's on those hooks, but they're just so sticky. Everything likes to eat that Mirrodeen. All right, so what about a spoon, Dave? Search bait. 
Yep, the spoon is probably the number one go-to for me if I don't know what's going on in a place. If I get there right away and I'm trying to find something to eat something, I'm going to throw the gold spoon until I get a bite. You know, right. that's a great way to find the fish. You're and then you can go bigger, you know, if, whatever if you want to do. But that, the gold spoon, you cannot beat it for yeah. anything. One of my favorites. I certainly won plenty of money throwing a gold throwing spoon. A gold yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. it simple. And they still eat that. Even all, right. all these years later. Oh, well, there you go. 